Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be testing out um, Morgana Rose Art and my new handmade tinted graphite watercolour paints. It's a collection of six different shades known as the Deep Forest Collection and at the moment it's a limited edition so there's only a few sets left but we're really pleased with it and if it seems to go down well we will hopefully be making some more of them. So if you're interested in taking a look at these, plus our new um, range of um, tube watercolour paints, please follow the link below to Morgana Rose Arts Etsy shop. I'm going to be painting this beautiful Mid-Sussex Lane scene, which I've drawn out using waterproof fine liners. I always like to keep my line and wash paintings really simple um, because I think the line work carries nearly all the detail. So what I'm going to do is try out the paints. These are tinted graphite, which means we've mixed um, graphite powder with um, various pigments to produce some beautiful colours. So here's the set. There are six full pans of tinted graphites and one small complementary pan of our Davidson's Grey, which is our homage to Payne's Grey. And it's a really nice neutral um, to use. So I'll just swatch out the colours. Um, this first one is wood smoke and then the second one is a really nice rich deep green um, which we call pine needle so you can see they're really dark powerful colors but they're still really beautiful and translucent when mixed with lots of water um, the next colour is Tarnish, which is sort of like an old gold or old sort of um, worn metal colour with sort of hints of, of gold and bronze to it. The fourth colour is Brick Dust, sort of a nice sort of pinky red colour. Again, very intense, but um, it really comes out lovely and transparent when diluted with lots of water. I'll just um, zoom out a little bit now and paint out the fifth one which is Blackberry and then the final colour is, um, is Hematite and what's nice about these tinted graphites is that if you hold the dry painting up to the light, you get a delicate shimmer from all of these from the graphite powder. And then the final colour or shade is, is a complementary pan of our Davidson's Grey, just for dark accents and um, as, a, as a neutral um, to go with the graphite. This Payne's Grey does not have graphite powder in it, it's just a classic um, dark neutral that can be very useful um, with with any sort of limited palette collection so i'm going to try out some colors on this little sketch here first before i commit to the full size painting so i'm starting off with wood smoke which is this beautiful sort of dusky blue um, i'm going to use that for the sky i think probably in the larger painting i'll put a bit more variation into it maybe leave some sort of clouds across there too with unpainted paper and you can see that it's really subtle and transparent oh you can see all the pencil lines through it and yet it's got some nice depth it's a nice shadow color too so I shall pull that across the landscape a little bit and then just kind of try out a, a few more colors so that's pine needle just to get a bit of green into the foreground This is Tarnish, it's a lovely colour for these background trees. Yeah, I'm liking the way these are working out. I'm trying to keep a light path running from the horizon line on the left across to the bottom on the right. Um, so I'm sort of just, well, for the finished painting anyway. Now this is Brick Dust and I think that pulls it all together. I'm really enjoying the way these colours are working together. Working wet in wet now. Um, just to get an idea, I'm not worried about this being a fancy painting or anything. As I say, I'm just trying to get an idea of how it looks. That's just a little bit of dark in now. That's a bit of the hematite, which is a really nice black. Hopefully it'll lighten up a little bit more. 
and I can just blend that in a bit more with my brush as well. But I think these colours work really well together. It's one thing that we did work hard on was trying to get the collection to be able to go well together and to be very harmonious. And um, no matter what colours you're using, you know, whether you're using your own favourite classic watercolours, um, I would recommend um, doing a sort of watercolour sketch like this, trying out your colours first before committing to a larger painting. It can really help because it can help you to see what's going to work and what isn't going to work. And the colours that you had in your mind that you think might work actually don't go very well together. Um, so you can try it out first in your sketchbook or on a scrap of paper um, and not risk ruining the painting. And then when you discover sort of combinations that you like, you can feel a lot more prepared when you tackle the larger painting. So it's all dried and so I've just put in a few branches and a few twigs and a few sort of shadows now across the path. And I'm quite happy with the way the colours are all looking and working together like this. The Payne's Grey really works to bring the painting together with those dark accents. So using that as a roadmap, I shall now um, start to paint my full size painting. I'm using a quarter sheet of Milford cold press paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of 45 degrees and my line work is done with um, Faber-Castell waterproof pit pen fine liners. If you're using your own paints, you can substitute these um, tinted graphites with other colors like Prussian blue, light red, um, sepia, maybe raw sienna, um, some Payne's Grey as well, and that should get you pretty close to these kinds of colours. So I'm going to start off with the sky. So I've mixed up on my palette um, a nice puddle of wood smoke, which is this lovely muted blue. So I'm using a small uh, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush to paint in the sky. Pulling it down as far as the horizon. So I'm painting this wet paint onto the dry page. Using plenty of paint, and because my board's at an angle of 45 degrees, there's a bead of paint pooling up at the edge of wherever um, my paint meets the dry paper and that keeps the paint active and flowing so that I don't get any nasty marks or runbacks. I work across my sky trying to build up some variation in tones, leaving some scraps of white paper and now I'm going to get a bit of tone using um, brick dust and more of the wood smoke and a bit of um, tarnish to add a bit of tone to my winter trees. And then across the horizon line. This is a very neutral palette. Um, so I'm just really dipping into any of the paint. This is the wood smoke again, just to build up a bit more. I'm just trying to get the look of all those twigs um, rather than any foliage, so to speak. As I say, I'm hoping that it will just lighten down a little bit and I can sponge a bit of that off if I need to. Softening up the sky a bit with a synthetic mop brush. And now I'll paint the land using the tips mostly of the flat brush and, um, sorry, the harky brush and wood smoke and brick dust. For that, you could use light red, Prussian blue, maybe some Payne's grey and just pulling it across to begin to um, paint the impression of the shadows falling on the land um, more than the actual um, realistic colour of the land itself. Trying to leave plenty of unpainted uh, paper um, across the central path area in a shallow diagonal running from um, left to bottom right. I'll put some more shadows in later at the moment, just trying to get some of this lovely tone 
and these beautiful like um, dusky colours into the landscape. Um, I'm trying to paint around the fence, um, which especially in the end of the fence in the distance where I have negatively drawn in that dark ivy covered bush at the end so that the pale fence shows up. I'll put some tone into the fence in a bit, but at the moment, um, trying to focus on keeping that, that light and I'll get some tone in once I've balanced up um, the tones and the hues everywhere else. Just darkening up across underneath the horizon line. Yeah, it's starting to build up the look of distance. And now I need to lift out the paint from those fence posts in the foreground and with for that I'm going to simply and quickly, while it's still wet, lift the paint out with a clean damp flat brush. Sort of cleaning the brush off, um, drying it out a bit and then, as I say, lifting off that paint so that the fence um, stands out a bit more. And now I'm just going to leave that layer to dry off and then come back and finish the painting. Now that it's finished, um, using the flat brush, three quarter inch flat brush and a mixture of hematite and Payne's Grey, you can just use Payne's Grey, um, pulling out the shape of the shadows from the trees and the fence. bringing them across the path, making the shadows a bit shallower and a bit lighter as it goes off into the distance. Keeping it nice and dark and nice and impressionistic. I don't think I'm going to do much more than that. Um, maybe just a few little bits of sort of something and nothing across the foreground where I put in some marks with the fine liner just to suggest sort of tufts of grass or stones in the path and around in the foreground, something and nothing. Just a few little bits of added texture and then finally some dry brush texture over this uh, pollarded tree um, which is of course the focal point so it's just bringing a little bit more texture to that skimming some of this dark mixture um, so it catches the texture of the paper sort of hit and miss just to add a little bit of volume to the tree And I think I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'll remove the tape and see how it looks. And here it is. Um, I think the colours have worked really beautifully to create the impression that I wanted, kind of sort of fairly rugged, earthy, um, winter, atmospheric scene. Um, and I think the tinted graphites have worked really, really well for that, but you could equally use um, any colours that you like for this sort of scene. I'm just going to um, put a bit more dark Payne's Grey um, into the shadows because they've dried back a little bit lighter. So just bring out that dark, one more layer of dark. The nice thing with watercolour is it's a transparent media so you can just build up different layers and each layer will darken up the tone a little bit more. Of course, most of the darks here are um, are managed by the fine liners at the beginning as it's a line and wash. So that's one of the reasons as well why I try to keep the washes very, very simple, um, just to set the scene and build atmosphere. So thanks so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And um, follow the links below if you're interested in taking a look at our watercolour paint. Um, and the demo from Morgana Rose Art for the tube paints. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. 
and I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.